Hey there. We are today going to work on this picture using the dust and scratch blur method as well as a little bit of paint. So we're going to touch this up. This takes uh, uh, a little bit longer time but it's of uh, better quality. So, what are we going to start off with first? Well, we actually have touched up this picture already. So, you'll notice that it was there. Then we played with the uh, stamp tool and the healing brush. We got uh, rid of that on her face and we brightened it up. But you'll notice that if we zoom on in, we've got a lot of uh, problems with the skin. And we want to smooth that out. By the way, I should point out that nobody's uh, skin looks that awesome when you zoom in this much. Okay, so we are going to smooth that out, but then add in some texture so that it still looks human. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is you will notice we have areas on the picture that are kind of dark. And I'm specifically looking at her forehead right here. Um, and... Uh, so I want to shade that in and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this paint forehead and then I'm going to pick a brush and my brush is going to be a hardness of zero, whatever size that you would like. And I'm going to pick the part of the skin. I'm going to hold down the option key Alt for Windows, and I'm going to pick the part of the skin that I like the color. And I'm going to go uh, probably around here. All right. So I picked that color, and right now I'm only at an opacity of 10% right now on my brush. And I'm going to just paint back and forth 10%. That's all I'm going to do. Just get in there. I don't want to paint too much. Little dabs, little dabs. I'm going to zoom on in. And B for brush again. I'm going to make this smaller and get on in there. Get in there. Okay, so this part of the bridge of her nose too. Just touching little dabs, little dabs right here. Awesome. Okay. I think that we are pretty good. Maybe add a little bit more in there. And I think that is what we're going to do. That's all. I just couldn't leave it alone, could I? I'm going to undo what I just did. I'm going to back up. Command zero. Okay. Now, I got to admit, doesn't look that great, does it? Okay. Uh, it uh, looks like pancake makeup kind of thing. And so I'm going to click on the opacity and I'm going to drop her down to about, uh, well, I'm at 64 right now. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going back and forth until I get it so that it's balanced enough so that it's not noticeable. And just to... Uh, Bit, so it's not noticeable. Right, okay. Wow, that was a 96. Interesting. So I off and on. I'm going to drop her down slightly. And I go off and on. Yeah, that is much better. And that's going to look a lot better once we do our dust and scratch blur. Excellent. Okay. Now it's time for the dust and scratch. So what we have to do actually is we're going to, we, the dust and scratch blur needs to work off of a single layer, at least that's what I've found. So I, I'm i going to need to uh, to match this layer, which has got this little bit of paint on there, along with the retouching layer. But I don't want to merge them together because, you know, if I need to back up, then uh, then I'm not going to be able to. So what I'm going to do is click on the retouching layer, go Command J to make a copy of the retouching layer. Then I'm going to click on Paint Forehead Layer and hold down the Shift key and click on Retouching Layer Copy. 
right here, and I'm going to merge them together, which is Command E. Boom. Okay, so that gives me the two layers together now. Okay, if I want to turn it off, I can just turn it off like that. And now I'm going to be able to make my dust and scratch blur off of this layer right here. Okay, great. So what are we going to do? So first of all, we're going to uh, we're going to make a new copy. We're going to go Command J, and we're going to change the name of that to Dust and Scratch. Awesome. Okay. Now I want you to go up to Filter, Noise, and Dust and Scratches. Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. And boy, look at that. That changed things super fast, didn't it? Okay. And I want you to actually click in an area that you feel is going to is needs the most work. For me, it's the again, it's this forehead right here. Okay. Boy, the the cheekbones look excellent. Okay. But fake. We're going to reduce that. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to play around with your settings right here. I want you to just go on up. All right, play. Okay, if we go up to 39 and we increase the threshold, you'll see what it does. And then turn the preview on and off to see, you know, what's it doing? What's it able to play with? What does it change? All right. And we're going to move the threshold down to 10. Play with it and see what it does. Look what all of this does here. Okay, now I am going to actually set this up to be, I like, 20 and 5. That's what I prefer right at the moment. I want 20 and 5. I turn preview back on, and that's what I'm going to go with at the moment. So once, once you get it the way that you like, say OK, and then go over here to the dust and scratch, and the in here put the numbers you used. So that way you know what you used. And you can also go back to the paint forehead uh, layer, make a new layer, and throw in another dust and scratch at different settings, and switch back and forth between the two. See what you like. OK. So next what we're going to do is we need to get some skin tones uh, back in here and uh, some texture. So M for the marquee tool and we're going to draw a uh, rectangle right on her forehead right here. Okay, and I'm going to pull this over here a little bit. Good. Okay, so the whole idea is what we're doing is we're making a mask right now which is going to show us uh, it is going to show us what our skin texture is going to look like compared to everything else. Once we're done with this mask, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll fill it back in. Okay, so let's zoom on in on this square, a rectangle. Good. And we need to fill this. Uh, we're going to create a mask and fill it with black. And because this is already selected, if you click on the Create Mask down here, Add Layer Mask, boom, you'll notice that we now have a mask that is all black except for that white little rectangle that's right there. Okay, good stuff. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add texture to the skin and then we'll be able to see it inside our mask and compare it to the other. Okay, so let's make a blank layer up above and nope, oh, I did it the wrong way. I have to actually do this here by clicking on layer, new layer, which is shift command N and make this a clipping mask. Click here, turn this into an overlay mode overlay and click fill it with 50% gray. Let's call this texture for skin. Awesome. 
Okay, now we filled it with gray because in order to make texture, you gotta have something. So we just fill this thing with gray, the color gray, and then that way we can make a texture on that color gray. Good. Okay, so now we want you to go to the filter menu and click filter gallery, filter, filter gallery, and we're gonna pick texturizer right here. Make sure that you have texturizer and sandstone and you've got the scaling. I like the scaling all the way down at 50 and the relief at 4. You can play with those settings if you'd like. Just see what it does. Okay, so I've got 50 and 4 and say okay. There it is. Now, you will notice right here that this, it kind of looks like skin not really it, it looks pretty darn fake so we're going to need to actually play around with this so this is what you do while you've got the texture for skin selected in here this layer I want you to go command T or control T on a Windows and then you will now have the ability to change the size of this now this is a big rectangle and we're going to uh, open and close it, which is going to basically change the size of this little, of this texture. We're going to hover over top of the letter H right now, and a click, and I'm, if you drag it to the right, you'll see it's, get, it, it's changing, and I want you to drag it to the left, and you'll see that it's getting smaller. Okay, whoop, so small that we've actually got the top right here. And I'm going to make this just, you have to wait for it to update a little bit. And you'll notice that it's starting to actually look a lot like the skin that she has. And so I want you to find the best version that you can. But there are some limitations here. And the limitation is actually, see that blue line up there on the top that's your limitation you can't come down below her hair so I gotta put that up above her hairline I'm gonna zoom out command zero do you see here we go now we've got this blue box right here and so we're going to just pull this down there that's pretty much that's the smallest we can go and I'm okay with that. I'm going to click on the check mark. And good. Now we have our texture. Excellent. Okay, so we don't need this rectangle anymore. Let's fill that with black. And on a Mac, you can go, uh, in order to fill it with the background, right now, see how black is the background over here? Well, you're going to be able to go Command Delete in order to fill that in. Uh, on a Windows machine, if you want the background filled in, then it would be Control Delete, I believe. If neither of those work for you, don't worry. Go Edit, Fill, and Fill with Background Color. Black happens to be in the foreground color. Use that. Whatever. All right. So we just filled it. Great. Okay, so now what I want you to do is we're going to paint in that, uh, that dust and scratch blur on the mask. Okay, so make sure that you are clicked actually on the mask right here. Good. Hit B for brush. And now we have to be fairly careful where we're painting and by how much. Put the opacity up to 100% because we're going to, we'll play around with the opacity of the layer right here later on. Okay, but what's most important is that we want to, we're going to zoom on in and you don't want to get anywhere where you won't want this. Now the nice thing about using this method is that it's taking on the color so, 
I'm going to essentially paint all over her face wherever I will want this. And you'll notice that it is blocking out the skin that we won't want, the bumpiness of the skin. And don't worry, we'll play with the opacity and make this look a little more realistic. But wherever I want it to be, I am painting it in. Okay? All right. I'm going to put this on fast forward. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, you'll notice just up in here, I'm going to switch my opacity to uh, about 30%, and, geez, i got to type faster than that, 30, there it is, okay, and I'm going to get in here in this little area where, where I'm on the edge, and just to give it a little bit of a gradient into that zone, and moving around. By the way, I'm using the space bar in case you're wondering how I'm moving around. Space bar gives me a hand tool like that. Okay, and wherever I see just a little bit there, I'm painting it on and moving around. Good. I think I pretty much have this the way that I want. Fabulous. Command zero zooms us out. Awesome. Okay. So now what I want you to do is click on the layer, click on the opacity, and we are going to go back and forth until we find the sweet spot. So, okay. So go until basically what I do is I push it until it's fake and then I back it off slightly. Alright, so you can do that. Push it till it's fake looking and then back it off slightly. Okay, and I think that is looking pretty good. Pretty good. Let's compare the other uh, the other pictures that we have this is the previous one that I talked about that used the method of um, of surface blur and this is the paint method and go back so this is dust and scratch and a little bit of paint this is the surface blur and here is your paint method. So, and it all came from this picture to begin with. So, I think that's a pretty good job. Okay, thank you very much.